Hey team, uh, thank you very much for uh, our time the other day. And as promised, I wanted to record a quick video walking you through some of the more detail around how I work with practices, the resources that are available. I sometimes find it's hard to cover all of this in a session. So um, giving you sort of the detail uh, later on, I find is, is far more useful. There all, should also be attached to this email a copy of the notes uh, that we put together in our, our, our session. So this should outline sort of the ROI, what we're looking for, the key strategies. So I'm just going to focus on uh, how the program works, what's in included and all the rest of it. Hopefully this will answer sort of uh, most of the questions that you have. But if you don't, please feel free to email me back and, and, and ask whatever else you need to know. So the program I'm going to be walking you through is called Practice Evolution was previously called the Leverage Advice Firm Program. Uh, it's one of three ways that I work with practices, but this is my primary method of working with practices uh, who are looking for, 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 for an active coaching relationship. I may have in our session spoke a little bit about um, uh, my experiences, uh, how long I've been doing this, and in particular, my experiences in the tech startup space and how that led me to sort of mold together these two worlds and led to obviously the book, led to the working group and, and now the program. But I'm going to dive into a little bit of uh, the detail and specifically why a lot of the topics and the content we cover often in the program have become increasingly relevant. So, I mean, it's no surprise to anybody that over the last few years, the way advice is provided, whether you're a broker, whether you're an accountant, or whether you're an advisor, or whether you do a bit of everything, it's really been evolving quite quickly. You know, whether we talk about legislative change, when we talk about the introduction of technology, you know, the different um, um, communication platforms that are available, uh, or just some media influence, there's no doubt that that sort of that speed has, has continued to increase. And the downside is it, it's in many cases, it's, it's had a negative impact on what we used to call traditional business models or traditional advice models or best practice models. And it's actually created barriers for growth. Those barriers are typically capacity. You know, ultimately, you've got a lot of advisors and principals out there who are struggling to get things done. Compliance and understanding it, interpreting it, applying it. Technology, both in terms of what do you choose, but also technology sometimes not doing what we, we, we want it to. Resourcing has become increasingly challenging, even despite there, there, are, there are a number of different options that weren't around a few years ago. I think most businesses at some in way, shape, or form, has struggled with profitability, and I think the impact of this has often been translated into, um, you know, for many advisors, challenge to, to to sort of just manage everything, and that obviously has a negative impact. But at the same time, I've always looked at the last few years as a turning point, and there's a lot of businesses who have recognised that the way that advice uh, is being done, the way that practices are run, has changed, and they've they've taken hard steps to get ahead of it, and now they're well positioned for the future. There are other businesses who have spotted it, but they've had to work harder. Um, but uh, they, you know they recognise that they've got a lot of work to do, but there's no time to mess around. And then there, obviously there's others who um, recognise that they didn't want to make that shift and have now chosen to exit the industry, which I think in many cases is quite sad, given. Um, there are a lot of really good quality advice professionals who've made that choice. But on the flip side, I kind of look at this and I ask this question of whether advice may be on the cusp of, of a new, without doing too dramatic, a golden age. You know, I look at the evolution of fitness and where it's come from over the last 30 years. So now it's a huge global industry with massive participation rates across the board. And I look at our industry and I think we're on or in our industries, we're on a similar sort of journey. You know, the demand for solutions to, to modern day strategy and mismanagement, it's growing. People are more and more aware of the role that money plays in health and well-being. And I think there is a drive to enable people to access better quality uh, client-centric advice, and that's now being uh, recognized. And I think the point I often make to people is, this is not something which is starting now, it's already begun. Many of the solutions that practices are looking for, they already exist. People have done it. I've done it. My practices have done it. Other coaches have done it. And they include, you know, just picking a few areas. You know, how do you make digital marketing work for advice and make sure it works with the way that you traditionally prospect, which has been referral-based and, and partnership-based? Um, what's the best way to approach these conversations with clients who are increasingly uh, informed about their options? Um, how can I transition my entire business across within 12 months without a financial impact? Uh, what's a better way of managing workflow and systemizing my business so I can break through some of those barriers? You know, what, what should my service offering be and my proposition so people, clients work with me and, and, and bring in other people who, who want to work with me? And uh, how can I put together a plan that isn't kind of the old school, you know, 
bank style plan that, that really does never translates into action. And that's kind of where, where I and we in the business comes in. And really, if I break down what I do, it, it, I coach businesses and I work with small businesses. Uh, well, I say small businesses, I work with practices uh, all the way from smaller businesses to, to larger businesses, very different types. And I do it because I, I really enjoy, to be frank, working with people and uh, unpacking their problems and helping them to move from being one type of business to the next type of business. Um, and so on. I also do consulting uh, for larger businesses who, you know, we're doing multiple trainings uh, with with multiple stakeholders. And obviously a big part of what I do is, is I do a lot of speaking gigs along the way as well. I guess underpinning uh, some of the beliefs, and there's a few, I just want to put it out there. I think there is a sweet spot between compliance and commerciality. And one of my focuses on the program is making sure that whatever I'm putting out there it's about finding that sweet spot. I also, and this is a big one that's come from tech startups, which is I believe that the future of advice isn't going to come from corporations. It's not going to come from uh, the associations. It's going to come from small businesses or practices, accountants and brokers and advisors who, get, who roll their sleeves up and go, how can I do this better? How can I improve this? It's going to be a grassroots thing. And for me, integration is the prime, prime challenge. I'm not just talking about technology integration. I'm talking about the integration between your business model and the way you resource and train staff and the way your technology operates and supports it all, and ultimately long-term, the way that your business is licensed and applies certain compliance frameworks. At the core of what I do lies uh, a bunch of frameworks, and one of those frameworks is about the journey. One of my goals as a coach is to work with a business and understand not just what you have and what you don't have, but more importantly, what stage of growth that you're at. And based on that stage of growth, what are the things that we need to focus on doing really, really well and implementing in the business in order to make it to the next phase, depending on where you want to get to? Uh, what are the things we should ignore and leave till later and introduce at a later point? And similarly, when we look back, what are the things that you may have grown your business along uh, the route that may not have been put in place that we might want to look at doing? And that's a big part of the planning process, making sure that uh, any business I'm working with is focusing on the things they can work on now and focus on with, with um complete focus that are going to move them forward, solve the most important problems and put in place the things that'll set them up for the next phase of growth so they can progress as far down that path as they want to. And just to, to reiterate, it's not always about going to a fully leveraged business model. For many of my clients, they just want to build a small, profitable niche practice. Uh, but it's about identifying where you want to get to and then putting in place what you need to at that stage of growth and also ignoring what you don't. The coaching methodology I apply is really, really simple. Uh, and it's what I would expect uh, when, I, when, I, when I've used coaching. I'm a big user of coaching, which is I want someone who's going to sit down with me and create a clear plan of what I need to do uh, this year, next year, this week, next week, this month, next week, and what do I need to attract uh, in order to achieve what I want to achieve and to shift my business specifically across. I want someone to give me the resources, whether it's training, whether it's tools and templates, whether it's the introduction to the right technology. Uh, whether it's introduction to the right people. And finally, I want someone who, who has the ability to implement, more importantly, has the ability to walk me through how to implement, how to get my team implementing. Because ultimately, uh, you can have the best plan and the best resources in the world, but if it's not implemented, you're not going to get the ROI. Let me break it down quickly. Uh, for me, when I'm creating a clear plan with any practice evolution client, it's about starting with an analysis, as we've spoken about before. Then we sit down and we create that strategy focus map, which is very much about working out what you personally want from your business at the end of it all. It's very much about defining the purpose and mission of your business, getting clear about the end game and making 10 strategic decisions about what your business will and won't do over the next three to five years. Uh, one of the big uh, models that we apply uh, before we go anywhere near a 12 month plan is we call it impact analysis, where we analyze every single potential project that could form part of the next 12 months, often based on, on the, the strategy focus map and where we are. And then we get very, very clear about why it matters, why what the results this is going to give us, um, the output of the, 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 the project, and also what are the key success factors, because a big part of it is then taking that and organizing it into what we call a domino roadmap. This draws heavily on uh, some of the theories outlined in The One Thing by Gary Keller, which is, I am a strong believer in focusing on one as much as possible, one project at a time. And part of impact analysis is making sure that the project you're focusing on at the point in time is the one that's going to solve your biggest problem, shift the dial the most, or alternatively make some projects or, or, or problems unnecessary to be solved because you do so with that project. And 
this forms part of essentially the first you know, month or two. Actually, no, let's be honest. It forms part of the first month uh, when I'm working with the business and it's something we re repeat annually, both with individual clients and also collectively. Right Resources has got four components. It covers having on-demand training. Um, I remember a while ago, someone introduced me to the Khan Academy, which is a, a really good case study of uh, how education should be done. And one of the concepts around it is um, you want to work with somebody who understands something at the detail around it to help solve your problems. If that person is rote teaching you concepts in a coaching session, that's not the best use of time. And so over the course of the last uh, uh, seven years, we've made sure to put all of our training on demand available so people can go and watch the training. And then when we rock up to a coaching session, we're not having to, we're on the same page about concepts. We understand how we're going to do this and we can get stuck into the doing. They're all supported by extensive tools. We've got well over 500 templates, tools, visuals, processes, uh, worksheets, a uh, whole bunch of stuff. And many of these are actually rebounded by clients for use in client meetings, uh, in, in their communications, all sorts of things. Every client I work with gets a private coaching portal. And excuse the, um, the, the wording there, it's incorrect. Uh, essentially, every single coaching, every planning output we, we have, your plan, your, 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 your strategic vision, and a session summary of every single coaching session we have, which is who was there, what do we cover, what are the key actions that came off the back of it, what are the resources, and what are we going to focus on doing next when we catch up, they go on the coaching portal, which you can log in, and it also provides a repository of making sure that any task that's assigned to someone with a date, we can, we can track it in there as well as we have over the years put together a, a suite of proprietary tools and white label technology, which helps us to help our clients better implement marketing automations, uh, web analytics, uh, operations manuals, testimonials, all that sort of stuff. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, the curriculum scope within the member site, it covers three areas. There are modules on attraction, attracting clients, which covers lead generation, marketing, value proposition, niche focus, new client engagement, which covers everything from first contact call protocols to how to conduct a great first appointment, goals-based conversations, closing the appointment, uh, visual tools that covers onboarding, you know, first 90 days communications, uh, the, everything from, you know, the close of the first appointment to presenting the advice. Uh, the service area of, of the curriculum covers what's your proposition, what's, your, what's in your service offer, how do you deliver it, how do you price your, your, your services, how do you transition, how do you launch feeds with new clients, uh, value-based pricing, and client experience covers everything from communicating with clients to review processes and a whole host more, whereas resourcing, this is a section that covers everything to do with you know your back office how to outsource, manage your team, performance management, hiring, onboarding, systems covers processes, technologies, operations manuals, training systems, uh, uh, and productivity covers everything to do with making sure that you and your team uh, can produce your best work. And ultimately, it's the combination of these three areas. And part of my job is to pull out the right training modules and the right things we should be focusing on. But the aim is to get you growing, more efficient internally and ultimately uh, make sure everybody in particular the vice providers are supported if you were to open the member site this is what it would look like uh it would give you you know tabs for having a look at all of the upcoming training which i'll talk about in a second uh getting access to the training if you need to book a coaching session you could do it on there as well as a whole a bunch more and if you dived into the uh curriculum area as you can see each of the areas leads planning leads new clients onboarding offer etc is is, is co color coded and in there are, you know, uh, at least I think the minimum number of modules in a pro in, in in one area is six, and I think marketing has got leads has got the most. And each of those modules you can see in the right is broken down with the video training, broken down into easy to digest chapters with supporting tools and templates, which you can see uh, to the right there. So it's pretty comprehensive, uh, and it's intended. By the way, a lot of this training is incorporated with a theory component. And then uh, a session where we've recorded a live session where people are implementing it. And all sessions are very interactive as well. I often feel that having live examples to draw upon rather than just theory teaching is what helps people take an, uh, a concept and really go, okay, that's how to apply it. Uh, our technology street co suite covers a few areas. Obviously, the member site I've spoken to you uh, is on-demand training tools for you and your team. Coaching.out area is where you find and log into your coaching pro private coaching portal. Marketing.outdairy.com.au is a complete digital marketing platform. We've got a tool called Fee Modeler, which is a proprietary tool we built that enables you to log in 
uh, or work to work with me to build a fee model within 90 minutes, tweak it and get uh, and, and, and essentially have your fee model done and invested. Role audit is a tool we launched uh, recently, which enables you to go in, analyze someone's role, identify what the core they should be focusing on and create a handover plan. It's also really good for building systemization and fo like asking this question, what systems should we build? What processes should we build first? Finman is a pipeline analysis and management tool, which I use with clients who don't already have this. Peers.ourdairy.com.au is a private peer engagement discussion group, which is kind of like a, 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 a uh, yeah, discussion board. And then testimonials.adairy.com is a, a white label tool we use to make it really easy for clients to uh, collect uh, testimonials from their from their clients, maintain a library, and then easily publish it onto their website as well. Excuse the speed, I'm going as fast as I can. I know there's a lot to cover. Final bit area is enabled implementation. And really what this is made up is personal coaches, coaching. Please ignore the wording again. Um, essentially, you've got two options. We can book a regular monthly coaching meeting, uh, or we can do it the way that most clients do, which is we um, we work together as needed. We book sessions as we need them, and we just have a focus on making sure that any session, coaching session we have, there are clear actions off the back of it. And when we have another session, our focus is to try and work through the actions. So each session, we're progressing and we're working on what next. Uh, as well as there's a little bit of accountability, but I just love people to, to say, right, here's what we need to do between now and next session. We can pre-book the session or alternatively, I'm going to follow you up and just make sure we get it done. So we're focused on what we need to do next rather than did you do your homework. Um, implementation is something that often people ask, how are you going to help me implement? A big part of this is we have what's called a sprint system, which is a really structured way based on Kanban of implementing projects across three 12 week implementation periods during the year. And in between each area, we reset your one page uh, domino plan. And this is really key because frankly, what you thought was the focus and what should be your projects in uh, in sort of January is very rarely the things that you, you should focus on when you get to sort of September and October and tweaking it is the key to making better progress. Uh, in addition to um, all of the modules, I do live training sessions around 17, uh, a session during uh, a year during every 12 month period. We draw from the curriculum. We we also have themes for each of our sprints based around the journey to uh, journey framework. And ultimately these are very interactive. They're about taking the content, but working through it in a really interactive um, action driven area. I just love sort of working with uh, live groups. And to be frank, People sometimes come along to them because they, they want to be active part of them. It's what they're working on in their plan. Some people I say, if it's not what's in your plan right now, park it to one side. The recording will be available that you can look at later. And some people just come along because they like to sort of be there, uh, hear what other people are doing. And sometimes it gives them a bit of advance notice as to what they may be working on in the future. And finally, uh, we try and create as many peer engagement opportunities as we can. Uh, and generally, one of these areas, uh, other than the peer platform, is to run uh, two five-month peer group programs, small uh, pro peer groups, uh, where it's based around a mastermind session that kind of encourage peer accountability, that give people the opportunity to get feedback to the problems that they may be facing from, from other peers who may have experienced them, workshops and common issues, and ultimately get people to have a look at you, what you're doing, and get fresh ideas. Ultimately, when I'm working with businesses through the program, there's you know, people say, what's the ROI? What's the outcome? There are two types of outcomes. There's the stuff we're going to achieve in the first 12 months and the stuff that we'll achieve in the first 12 months that's just going to keep um, compounding. But some of the things that I, uh, that I work with businesses is making sure that, that they're getting a higher volume, of better quality leads, and they understand how digital marketing and non-digital marketing work together. They generally get better engagement with their clients, uh, and that's in terms of it feels better. There's reduced turnaround times less fee pack pushback, better traction with the conversations they have and better engagement. One big one, particularly when I'm touching on pricing and service offer is they get back profit or they get back capacity. And that allows firms the resources and the headspace to be able to reinvest in the business, focus on systemize and punch through some of those challenges that business offers them face in that dangerous middle. Full systemization is something that a lot of businesses get on the path to, and we accelerate that and help that you get your whole team involved. Improved practice efficiency was often by uh, implementing technology, but also you know reducing tech reliance often and adopting you know better time usage or better time management habits. And uh, yeah, mo much of this or many of the things we work on are often things that um, you know four or five light years later when I touch base with the. A former client, they talk to me about how they're progressing, and these are things that are still still working for them. Uh, there's a whole range of 
sort of testimonials. Uh, I'll put a link in the email, which gives you a sense of what of our former clients uh, have, have talked about what we do. Give you a sense of, of the style of coaching, as well as how maybe what I do and what the business practice is about is, is different, very different from generalist coaching and to be frank, a lot of other coaching styles. So that's an overview of the program. That's an overview of how it all works. I hope that's giving you the information you need. And of course, if you want any more, please feel free to come back and let me know.